Fair warning, this is going to be a really exhaustive video just about creating your character. If this is something you feel like you can do on your own, which is fairly reasonable, you can skip right ahead to my video about the beginning gameplay basics. So, you want to play Ilona. Well, it's a good choice. It's a, it's a great game. It's one of the more forgiving roguelikes that you can get into. Pretty beginner-friendly as the genre goes but it can still be pretty daunting for a new player to get into. It's still more complicated than your usual game. So that's why I'm here. I can be a guide to get you into the basics of the game. I've played the game for well over 100 hours, and even in all of that time, it's like I'm far from being able to say that I know everything about the game, or that I have a deep understanding of the game in general, or most things in the game, but I know enough to get you started. Now, in all likelihood, in order to make the most thorough tutorial possible, I'll probably have to make several videos here uh, covering a variety of different subjects. This first video will just be about creating your character, getting into the very beginning of the game, and then we'll start talking about how to actually play it, just one step at a time. Now, the game is free, of course. You can just download it anytime you feel like it. But when you go to do that, you might realize there's Ilona, and then there's Ilona Plus. So, which one do I play? Do I play the original Ilona, or do I play the Plus version? Well, I can tell you all about both versions and the differences. The short answer, though, is play Ilona Plus. It's what I'm going to be playing for the course of this tutorial, and it'll be easier for you to follow along if you're playing Plus. You might be put off when you read that uh, Ilona Plus is not fully translated, but the thing about that is Ilona Plus is just building onto the original game. It's like the original game plus expansions. And still, like, I would say 99% of it is translated into English. It's very rare that you're going to run into something in Ilona Plus that is completely untranslated or that you can't, like, figure out by context clues. So by all means, play the very newest version of Ilona Plus, and you're going to have the best experience. There's not really much reason to play the original Ilona anymore, unless you just deeply disagree with a lot of the design choices of Ilona Plus, but as a new player you're not gonna have a deep knowledge of those in the first place. The only thing is, the original Ilona was made by one specific developer, and he ceased development on it eventually. But when he ceased development on it, it wasn't completely finished, like there were still a few unimplemented features here and there, but he made the source code available for the public to use. And so, you know, a handful of developers picked it up and started making Elona Plus. They started implementing those unimplemented features and even started adding new things. So yes, play Elona Plus. Now, the first thing you need to do, obviously, is create a character. And you do this by hitting the Generate a Character button on the main menu. You don't need to worry about Incarnate a Character, that's a more advanced feature that comes up way later in the game. And you don't need to worry about Restore a Character. I don't know if that button will even show up if you haven't made a character yet. Now, the first screen you're brought to when you create a new character will tell you to choose your alias. Now, this is nothing too terribly important to character creation. Basically, this is a title that will be attached to your character throughout their life. It's sort of a nickname or something like that. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any way to skip this. I think you have to pick a title. It's basically just going to be like an adjective with a noun. And there's a pretty big database of them that the game draws from. So you just pick something that sounds cool. Oh look, it's me! Pick something that describes the kind of character you want to create. Something that just sounds cool or sounds funny. It's not going to impact the way your character plays, it's just a piece of your name that you have to pick. And you can re-roll a new set of names as many times as you want, until you find something really spectacular that you just fall in love with. I would say choose wisely because it's always going to be attached to your character throughout the game. But you don't have to choose that wisely because, you know, it doesn't impact the gameplay in any way. Like, my most played character's alias is Fresh Opening, which I was like, 
you know, I went through that and I was like, oh, it'll, it'll be like I'm making a fresh start. It'll be like I'm starting this game anew with a fresh perspective. Plus it sounded a little mistranslated, which is kind of funny to me. Oh no, not that. So at the very next screen that you're brought to, now don't let this reflect poorly on my abilities as a teacher here, uh, but I don't know what this screen is about. This is something pretty new to Ilona Plus. As far as I can tell, it's just more flavor text, more of an origin to pick, and I don't believe that anything that you select here is going to impact the gameplay. I mean, I looked this up, I researched it, and nobody can really tell if this actually affects the game. So it's safe to assume that it's nothing major. I don't know if you're even going to see this at any other point in the game outside of this menu. So just get on through this, and we'll continue. Next up, we have the race selection screen. We're just now getting into the meat of things that are going to impact the gameplay once you get started playing. Now, I can give you some advice on how each individual race plays, but I want to preface all of this advice by saying characters in Ilona are pretty flexible. If you pick a particular race and a particular class, you aren't like locked into anything for the entire course of the game, for the most part. I mean, each race does have unique things that, you know, the other races don't really have. But, you know, if you make, like, a dwarven fighter and you decide 20 hours into the game, you know what, I'd really rather be playing a wizard. You don't necessarily have to make a new character. Like, that dwarf fighter can learn magic. It might be harder for him since, you know, he spent so much time learning to be a fighter, but it can be done. So don't feel like you screwed up your character creation by making some wrong choice and that whatever character you make is doomed and you can never have that character that you would really rather have. However, the selection of your race is going to have a lot more of an impact than the selection of your class. Because some of the races have certain aspects to them that cannot be changed in-game whatsoever. Now before I go through in detail and dissect what every race is, I'm just gonna go ahead and say from the beginning, these races right here are pretty good beginner races. Like if you make one of these your first character, you can't really go wrong. You're not gonna have a horrible time. But these characters, they either have significant handicaps that would be really unforgiving to a new player, or they just play in a specialized way that would be harder to teach and harder to learn if this is your first time opening the game. I'm not saying never play as these races, except maybe the snail, but don't make one of these your first character. Like once you get a grasp on the basics of the game, if you decide you want to, you know, go back and examine these races in more detail, uh, by all means, give one of them a try. But I would say stick to one of the more, for lack of a better word, generic races for the beginning. Just so that it's not too hard to get your bearings. Now, the pronunciation of these names are going to be my nearest approximation, since these were translated from Japanese, and that translation has varying levels of quality throughout the game. So if anybody thinks I'm pronouncing anything wrong, sorry about that. So the first race on the list is Urals. It's basically your generic human race. Basically every fantasy setting has that human or human-like race that is sort of the jack of all trades, and they have a high capacity for learning. They can basically play any class, or all classes, or whatever. Easily the most generic, and one of the races I most recommend starting with. It's what my first character is going to be in this tutorial. Under them is Yuldurna, basically the generic mage type of race, very magically oriented. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about what makes these races better or worse than another in different departments. I'm just going to give you a brief summary of what they are, so you can get into the game as soon as possible. Below them is the fairy, and while I don't recommend making your first character a fairy, it's not very beginner-friendly at all. 
but I think it is one of the most fun races to play in the long term. They're also very magically oriented and have pretty high charisma, but very low strength, and they can't wield anything that weighs more than one stone, or whatever the weight measurement is in the game. But they have incredibly high speed, and it's just a lot of pluses and minuses that make them a really fun experience. I recommend playing a fairy at some point in this game, just to see what it's like. But again, not your first character. Up next is the dwarf. They are basically the generic warrior type race. And a lot of, you know, fantasy games have a lot of downsides to playing a dwarf. There's not so many in Ilona. Feel free to make a dwarf your first character if you want to make a fighter. Next comes Jewer, and they are sort of the generic archer class, or, you know, dexterity based. So already you've got three good choices for, you know, the three main types of classes in this game. Pick Yildurna to be a mage, Dwarf to be a fighter, and Jewer to be an archer. Next is Ilya, another race that is inclined towards magic. Uh, another great bonus of them is that they have ether resistance. And if you don't know what that means, then there's probably no need to make this your first character. But once you do find out what that means, uh, you can decide for yourself if that's something you want. Because it can be very useful. After that is the snail. And the snail is basically the joke race or the challenge race. They start off with miserable speed and miserable stats all around. Basically, if you want the whole game to be an enormous grind, then make a snail. After that is the lich. And you can make your first character a lich if you really want to. They have the best, like, pure magic power. But they have awful strength and awful charisma, which can make certain things in the game more difficult. I wouldn't advise making this your first character, but they're not terrible to play. Goblins are pretty weak all around. There isn't anything that really makes them, you know, an outstanding character that you gotta try. I mean, they do have their specialties, but what they offer isn't anything that's going to be impressive to a new player. For now, I say just ignore goblins. Golems are extremely tanky characters, high physical melee power and very high health and defense, but they suffer in pretty much every other area and they're very slow moving. Again, not recommended to a new player. Then there are mutants. They're fairly ordinary at first glance. Their big gimmick is that they grow extra limbs over time, like as they level up, and uh, gain extra equipment slots. It's a neat sort of gimmicky race to pick, but for now you probably don't want to play a mutant. You can change the name of whatever race you just picked if you want to. There's no practical reason to do it, just flavor text or role-playing, I guess. You can be a male or a female, and the practical differences in-game are pretty much negligible. Basically, do you want people to refer to you as he or she? That's about all it boils down to. As far as I know, there's nothing in the way of story elements, equipment, or anything that are exclusive to one gender or the other. Just pick whatever makes you happy. Next up, we come to your class selection. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that a lot of these decisions are not super critical to the way the rest of your game is going to play. Class selection is even less critical than race selection. I'm not even going to go over every class in detail. I would say for your first character, just pick something that sounds pretty simple, like warrior, wizard, archer. Those are all pretty straightforward choices. The only one I would say definitely don't pick is tourist because it is the snail equivalent of the class choice. You basically start with no skills, and you have to learn everything in-game. Which, you know, can be done. It's not the end of the world. It's not an insurmountable problem. But on a new character, when you're playing for the first time, you want to have some advantages at your disposal. You'll see going through the list of classes that they give you bonuses to your attributes, and, you know, if you want to pick a class that plays to your race's strengths, or if you want to pick a class that makes up for your race's weaknesses, either one is a pretty pragmatic choice. You can go either route, it's whatever way you like to play. You'll also see a list of skills at the bottom here. 
Now these are just skills that these classes start with. Regardless of which class you pick, you can learn any skill in the game, pretty much. There is no class in the game that starts with some skill that no other class can learn. And it's not incredibly difficult to learn any of the skills either. The only thing is that the more skills you already learn, uh, the harder it is to get new ones. But you don't have to worry about that until way later in the game. For now, like I said, just pick something pretty simple to learn the game. Whatever sounds neat to you. Once you have your class, you're taken to a screen where you roll your starting attributes. Now, depending on the race and class that you chose, you're going to have different ranges for what these stats can come up. You can re-roll as many times as you want, and you can lock two of the attributes in place. If you get a high roll on something and you say, oh, I definitely want to keep that, you can do that twice, and then you just go on to the next part. And like I said before, with the class creation, uh, you know, you are by no means locked into these attributes for the rest of your game. As you use your skills, these attributes can increase pretty much forever as your game goes on. So don't worry too much about any low rolls. It's not going to have a huge impact at all. A difference of two or three attribute points at the beginning is not going to, you know, cripple your character or anything like that. After this, the game prompts you to pick out one of your skills and make that sort of a specialty to start with. And I believe all this does is make it easier to level that skill up, at least in the beginning, or maybe gives you bonus points into that skill at the beginning of the game. Once again, this is nothing too critical. I would say for your first character, just pick something that sounds pretty self-explanatory, like increasing your melee damage. After this, you'll probably get to pick some feats. And there are a lot of these in the game. I could probably make an entire video explaining every feat in detail, but for the moment, making your first character, my advice is going to be the same as the previous screen. Just pick something that makes obvious sense, like dodging or having your HP increased. You don't need to go too crazy here. If you pick something like Fire Breath, odds are you're not even gonna know how to use it when you first get into the game, and it's just not worth bothering with at this point. After this, you get to design what your character looks like. And this is all up to you, I have absolutely no advice to give on this point. The only thing that I will say is your skin color and your face and your hair are pretty much permanent throughout the game, but the clothes that you pick out here are not going to be super important because they get covered up uh, to some extent by armor, so don't fret too much about the clothes that your character is wearing. And this is another example of what little impact your gender choice at the beginning has. You can make your male character look as feminine as you like, or make your female character look as masculine as you like. Whatever you like. Okay, now on this screen, I'm just gonna tell you Pick the first option. Pick advancing. Pick the one that says this is the normal game. Everything else here, these are special challenge modes that will absolutely hugely impact the way you play the game and the way this character functions. It's like picking hardcore mode in Diablo or something. Just, you do not want to mess with these right now. We're pretty much at the end now. The game is going to show you your character sheet with all of your attributes. And if you look at the very bottom of the screen there, there's a re-roll option. So if you hit the enter key, it's going to re-roll some minor details here, like your character's age, their height and weight. And it's also going to re-roll things like your hit percentage and the melee damage that you do and how much HP you start with. Now, age and height and weight as far as I know, are pretty much meaningless in this game. HP is pretty important. You want to roll some fairly high HP, I guess. But all of those combat rolls down there in the corner, they don't really matter much at all because you're going to find items later on in the game that are going to change all of that. If you push P, it'll just take you back to edit your character again, you know, your appearance. If you hit Shift or Escape, 
you get to name your character and start the game. Stay tuned for another Elona tutorial next week, where I will talk about the basics of movement and just generally keeping yourself alive.